the Swartz Welder Method, uh, Because Writing Should Be Fun. This is an article by Peter Dirk with Lit Reactor. I love Lit Reactor. I write a couple articles for them a month, and uh, I read several articles from other lit, others. Lit Reactor is an excellent source uh, for writing uh, information from a number of different contributors with different viewpoints. I like a lot of articles from Peter Dirk. Uh, I like his take on things. A lot of times he's a little... Uh, harsher on certain topics than I would be um, but generally speaking he does have a point every time he has something to say alright so this is the Swartz welder method because writing should be fun for the first time and maybe ever John Swartz welder gave an interview who is John Swartz welder even if you're not sure who he is you've been touched by his work if you've ever heard the phrase alcohol the cause of and solution to all of life's problems I'm talking about the dude who wrote that. If you have an opinion on the good era of The Simpsons, you're almost certainly talking about the Schwarzwelder era. If you've ever read a detective novel that begins with, as my exciting story opens, I was being punched in the stomach, then you've read one of Schwarzwelder's hilarious books. Uh, and I'm a little concerned you don't remember who he is. You should get checked out. <laughs> The interview, Schwarzwelder, in the interview, Schwarzwelder debunks several long-held theories about him. Yes, he did have a diner booth installed in his kitchen for writing, but no, it wasn't the actual booth he often occupied in an actual diner. Yes, he did negotiate his contract so he didn't have to go to, into work, into the office every day, but no, it wasn't just because he wanted to smoke. Frankly, I don't recommend the profile. It mostly demythologizes demythologizes <laughs> a living legend and and how how is that fun i hate it when some clever uh fucker uses science and logic and facts to make the world less fun uh, like when a scientist demonstrates that glitter is bad for the environment so you're telling me that that fun is responsible for climate change well i guess i'll need to buy a skimpier set of swim trunks then because you can pry my glitter out of my cold dead hands and vacuum it up out of my cold dead carpet all right there is one super useful part of john schwartz welder's um interview however where he lays out his writing method i call it the schwartz welder method catchy eh all right so peter dirk goes into this piece that he thinks is really good and uh, after i read this article i knew i uh I liked what he had to say about it. Schwarzwelder's method is to bang out a draft that he knows is horrible all in one go if possible. Then he comes back and edits it the next day. All right, a quote here from him. It's like a crappy little elf has snuck into my office and badly done all my work for me, then left me left with a, a tip of his crappy cap. These crappy drafts include Stan stand-in dialogue maybe a stage direction with no joke it's mostly made up of all the boring parts of typing out a story so that way the next day it's an empty vessel just waiting to be filled with funny as Schwarzwelder puts it I've taken a very hard job writing and turned it into an easy one rewriting overnight all right swoopers and bashers this is Peter Dirk talking when someone says they are the when someone says there are two kinds of a thing, it always precedes them telling you what those two things are. Nobody ever says there are two kinds of writers, and it just leaves it at that. Someday, if I'm ever in an interview, that's my plan. There are two kinds of writers. Care to elaborate? Oh, uh, I guess not. I'm not really sure what the two kinds are, just pretty sure there are two. that two is the number. You'll see writers put into two categories, swoopers and bashers. Swoopers sweep through a draft fast and fix it later. Bashers go painstakingly sentence by sentence, making everything perfect as they go. I think I'm closer to a swooper than a basher, but I, I'm not to the points of, of Schwarzwelder where I'll just um, skip things and go on through. Um, I am of the mindset of just get the first draft done and then go back and see what you got and what you need to change and if you need to start over or any of those kind of things. Um, so I'm pretty close to swooper on that. Now, I don't uh, have a problem uh, with bashers the way that um, that uh, Peter Dirk here has. The Schwarzwelder method probably speaks to swoopers already, so it's a soft sell. 
I do want to highlight a, a key difference though. Save the fun for the second, third, and however many passes. Give yourself something to look forward to beyond the first wild ride. As for bashers, I don't respect bashers, he says. Get out of here with that shit. Bashers have a reputation for being exacting, putting everything in its place. They look down on swoopers for being anarchists on the page, and this is incorrect. A swooper is also very exacting. They just do the more exacting work in subsequent passes instead of instead of right off. Compare it to woodworking. You, you can say you're being efficient and exact by taking one, one thorough pass with a sander, but you're really doing a better job if you start with a coarse grit pass, then go medium, then fine. A thorough job done once might not always yield better results uh, than a swooper, a sloppier job done three times. Cited source, my masturbation journal. All right. Anyway, bashers, you already, you really should give this Schwarzwelder method a shot. I know it feels like it goes against every fiber of your being, but it's not that big a deal. It's just that every fiber of your being is stupid and you've been living life wrong. I know striving for perfection seems fun, but trust me, it ain't. All right, plotters and pantsers, he says. Uh, plotters and pantsers is another way to divide writers into two groups. Plotters plot out every entire f story first. Pantsers go by the seat of, their, of the pants and figure out the story as they go. You can use the Schwarzwelder method as either a plotter or a pantser. Because the method isn't about plot, isn't about plot or not. It's a way to deal with the sad, stupid fact of life that says you have a great idea for a novel. You can even have great lines in your head, but at some point you have to apply ass to chair and get it in print. If we could just beam the idea of the story straight into people's heads, we do that. We do it that way. But unfortunately, we're still tied into this narr these narrative options of books and movies that don't let you just share. The idea of a story and make it meaningful. You have to give it shape. The Schwarzwelder method might help you break out of feeling like that writing part is such a drag. I don't, I don't dislike the writing part though. Um, you do that boring, tedious work of cramming all the basics into the page as fast as you can, and then you go to go back and add explosions and butts and time travel and non-chicken type dinosaurs. All right, coal into diamonds. One of the things that speaks, hold on, let me get that back on screen, sorry. Coal into diamonds. One of the things that speaks to me about the Schwarzwelder method is that it's similar to something said by Tom Spanbaler. I respect both of these men deeply, and they are very different artists. Tom would say you have to, you have to shit out the coal before you can turn it into a diamond, meaning you have to fill the page with words before you can turn that page into something beautiful. If you think you're shitting diamonds, I've got a jeweler who's ready to disabuse you of that notion right quick. I guess what I'm saying is that the method is corroborated by more, by one of the best comedian comedian comedy writers of all time and one of the best literary writers of all time it's this is like republicans and democrats agreeing on a piece of gun legislation if two people so different can agree on something it's worth taking a look at now i don't know about that analogy it, i tend to think that if two politicians agree on something it's probably uh, terrible all right when it breaks down there are some situations where I might not recommend the Schwarzwelder method or when I recommend a modification. If you're working on a 600 page literary fiction novel, use the method in 10 page chunks. Bang out 10 pages, edit those into something pretty decent, then go, then do the next 10 pages. Also, if you're working on a 600 page literary fiction novel, I hope you've also got a room in your schedule to build a time machine because that shit ain't selling unless you can shoot back to 2005. Um, I, I do think 600 word epics are probably out, but uh, you never know what's going to come back around. If you're on part six of an epic fantasy series, so you know the characters and the plot and where it's all going, the Schwarzwelder method might be a mistake. You need to make sure you're keeping everything, everything engaging and fresh, and I think banging it out fast might make it easy to just maintain the exact tone and structure and plot of previous books, kind of a go on autopilot and call it good enough. If you're teaming up with something, if you're teaming up for something like a Word document, I'd skip it. I mean, I'd skip the method because it would look confusing and scary to everyone who isn't you, but I'd also skip the work document. Write all the 
write like three good jokes instead. The world doesn't need another work document. Why it's great. Sometimes you need a little section of a story to get you to where you really want to go. But once you run, once the story is complete, you can take that scaffolding away. Um, when you go Schwarzwelder, it's easier to quickly trash those scaffolding pieces. You don't fall in love with these unnecessary scenes the way you do when you spend a lot of time on them. Now that's an excellent point. Um, he's saying like when you when you spend a lot of time working out a chapter or a scene that's really just a bridge between two other things, um, you've kind of invested yourself in something that probably really does need to be cut. So that's one aspect of this that I think doesn't get thought about enough and uh, is maybe one of the biggest selling points of this method, especially for writing longer pieces. It's great for, for papers you have to write for school, seriously. It's much easier to go back and fix everything once you've got a roadmap laid out. Bonus, if you screw up and don't get everything fixed, you at least have something to turn in. And who knows, maybe the teacher will just skim it, see it looks decently long, and give you a B-, minus, which is more than you deserve. All right, fun. What I love about the method is that there's an emphasis on fun. Remember when writing was fun? If there was a way to, to make it fun again, wouldn't you at least give it a shot? Typically, novel writing methods mostly front load the fun. You have fun swooping through a draft and pl or plotting it out or whatever. Then you're stuck cranking at, cranking at the keyboard to bring it to life. Front load the boring, stupid parts and save the fun for last. I mean, when you when when have you ever tried to to write in a system that's based on making it fun? where that's the whole idea. Who ever knew such a thing existed? Maybe I should let Schwarzwelder sum it up. I was sleeping like a baby, waking up every three hours screaming and crapping my pants. Okay, that has nothing to do with this writing method. Just damn, his books are funny. You have to read them. All right. That is the Schwarzwelder method uh, by Peter Dirk. And again, Peter Dirk has a fun way of writing um, and ha he almost always has a really good point in my opinion. Um, I kind of like this idea and the way that I've made writing fun again for myself is doing it on stream. Um, this is kind of that situation where when I sit down to write a story live, um, I don't have a lot of time to just sit and stare and think. I got to just keep cranking out the words. It's very similar to how I would produce ghostwriting work uh, back when I was doing more of that. There were tight deadlines. I just uh, pounded it out real quick and then went back and made sense of everything um, in a quick edit. and. Uh, when I'm writing stories, I do more edits, obviously, but um, what I am able to do is uh, just keep going on a story and get it finished uh, because I know people are watching. I know I have to finish in one sitting. I don't dwell on things. I just I just go on, and then I know that, like, oh, I missed this idea and this idea from my notes. I, I'm going to make a note to add those in in the first edit or the second edit, and then uh, I can edit a little on screen. I can edit off screen, and then in the end, I think I end up with more good stories than I um, than I do most of the time when I'm just writing on my own and taking days and, and long breaks in between and all that.